It is a cold Wednesday morning in March 2012. Nurses at the Kitikrachi Government Hospital are frantically working on Kwaju Njofuni. He is about to embark on an over 600 kilometer journey to the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, where he underwent a spinal surgery in 2008. A classroom building collapsed on him and other pupils. Kwaju was to return to Kolebu for a medical review, but his father did not have money and attempts to get help failed. Kwaju has since been paralyzed and ridden with bed sores. The cost of today's treatment is being borne by some individuals in Accra who stepped in after my first story on Kojo aired. After nearly four years, Kwaju's father is still hopeful. That hope was dashed at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Dr. George Wepaba, a consultant neurosurgeon, confirmed the couple's fears. Kojo has not come back for follow up since 2008. He's been staying in his village. His parents are poor. Um, so they had a problem with rehabilitation, physiotherapy, which is one of the recommendations we gave at that time. It's not had enough physiotherapy. It's not been mobilized enough at home. That's why it developed all these sores. And uh, basically now, that is what he needs. Kwajo will never walk again. He can neither urinate naturally, nor control his bowels and would forever wear diapers to soak the involuntary discharge of fecal waste. Kwajo has also lost his manhood. Those who sponsored his treatment were also disappointed. I feel very sad and disappointed that um, we couldn't intervene again surgically. But I strongly believe and trust that God in his own infinite wisdom would have a way out. And there's certainly a miracle for Kwajo. And as the father said, we will continue to support, we will continue to pray for him, we will continue to give our widow smile from time to time to make sure he's back to school with his friends and uh, continue to enjoy life. The Angel Funi family found their way back to Krachi to nurse Kwajo's souls. Computer is a machine. Computer is a machine. Number five. Number five. We can use computers to type a letters. We can use computers to type the letters. None of these children has ever seen a computer, but they are determined against the tide of deprivation to excel in their ICT lessons. The absence of a computer is not the immediate headache of the staff and students of Nandikrom Primary School in Banda. They are studying in a death trap. The cracks all over these visibly weak walls put the lives of about 200 children of this school in danger. The story is not different at the Banda Roman Catholic Junior High School. A few meters away from this school is the Banda DA Junior High School. This is the best school in the Krachi West District, according to the 2010 BECE ranking. The students in this school escaped and hurt when their classroom block collapsed. They were not in class that day. But that was not the case for class 3 pupils of the Banda English Arabic Primary School in November 2008. The falling wall killed one student on the spot and injured many others. The remaining weak walls were demolished leaving the open pavilion to house the students. The scars of that accident are still visible on some of the children. Some of them could not undergo the recommended surgeries. The appearance, mostly peasant farmers, could not afford the cost. The children still live with various degrees of injuries. Labi Sumale, for instance, fell into coma for almost two weeks after that accident. The inability of his parents to pay for a recommended brain surgery has resulted in a mental problem. The Ghana Education Service did not offer any help as confirmed by this district director of education. Yes, we do not run ins insurance policies for our students. And so when something happens like that, we appeal to the general public for his support. 
and uh, the case was reported to the regional director. And I imagine that the regional director would have reported it to the director general. But so far as I'm aware, nothing has been done about it, the boy. He is still in hospital as we speak, as I speak to you. One child whose condition was still critical was Kojo Njafuni. After his return from Kolebu early this year, he visited the Krati Government Hospital a number of times as a result of related infections. Through it all, Kwajo and his family kept the candle of hope burning. Kwajo died after four years of fierce resistance and indescribable suffering. His distraught mother was speechless, but his father said the family was relieved that it was all over. They would now work and cater for the rest of the children. Kwajo was buried at the Banda Public Cemetery. This is where Godwin Ayensu, who died in the same accident, was buried four years ago. Kwajo's life and suffering have ended, but clouds of danger still hang over the students of Banda, and perhaps many more across the country who study in classrooms tend death traps. Education was the major issue for political parties in the just-ended parliamentary and presidential elections. But matching past electoral promises on education against concrete achievements of elected governments, it does not seem much will change until politicians stop focusing on the next election and spare a thought for the next generation. For Joy News, Manasi Azore Arine, reporting.